had a lovely harvest from the sweet corn. I had a question from somebody who asked, can you compost sweet corn? Well, yes, you can. And it's a really good thing to use as compost because it has both a mixture of green and brown. You can see the green leaves here and the stems are really woody. Now, if you have a shredder, you can skip this bit and just shred it up into nice shreds. But if you don't, then you want to be cutting it up into quite small pieces. And you can see it's quite woody in there. It nearly looks like a cane, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yes, yeah. it does. But it does make a really valuable thing to compost. Now, when you get it up into something like that size, if you can find yourself a hammer and then just give it a bash. And then it opens all of that surface area up so that it can begin to compost on your heap. Sort of starting the process off a bit, you know, quicker, isn't it? That's right, That's, yes. Yeah. That's right. And it still has enough volume about it, whereby if you do this to these stems, and then when you're starting a compost heap off, or in the middle, and just put those in there, it will actually help to aerate your compost. <laughs> Should mind your toes if I were you. <laughs> or your nose. <laughs> It's not to eat. Well, it is to eat, but it's for our compost to eat, not you. <laughs> Crazy, Poppy. <laughs> now, in today's video, I need to do some work in the greenhouse. Mrs W is getting very busy in the New Jig Norfolk Gardener's Kitchen. again so sweet corn relish is on its way we're going to start off with these are clean jars and I'm just going to put them into an oven at 100 degrees for about 20 minutes 25 minutes while we're cooking the ingredients off ready to decant the final produce into all being well <laughs> a little later so I'll put those in the oven now. And the good thing is, virtually everything that goes into this has come out of our garden. There's a few ingredients which haven't, but we'll go through those in a moment. What I did want to just demonstrate is, with the corn on the cob, how you cut it from the cob. So. First of all, obviously, remove the outer leaves and the silks. We've had varying degrees of germination on our sweet corn this year, haven't we? We've, yeah. Some have been better than others. Um, we've grown two different varieties. This was early bird and there's some swift as well. The swift hasn't done quite as well this year have they no but you can see there's still some little bit of lack of germination on or pollination i think it is not germination pollination i should get this right shouldn't i am i saying the correct word yeah pollination uh, pollination yes yeah, sorry <laughs> so some of them haven't formed but it, in the grand scheme of things it's not a bad um, cob so to cut them off and i've already done three others here I just start at the top of the sweet corn and try and keep as close to the actual 
cob as I can to take the biggest kernels off. Once you've done one cut down, you can then see the edge of the, the inside of the cob. So it's easier to then follow that down to get the maximum size kernels off. And I just gently go around, just turning it a little bit each time. Now, if you don't have your own fresh sweet corn, you can actually use frozen sweet corn for this. That's not a problem at all. And indeed, I presume you could probably use tinned as well. But we have the fresh sweet corn, so we are definitely using the fresh. So that's basically what you're aiming for, just the remains of the inner cob. One more and I think we should have enough then. So if you have full cobs, I would say you'd need three to four, probably four. These aren't quite full cobs, so I've used probably six or seven on this one because they're slightly smaller. And again, I like a little set of teeth, aren't they? <laughs> I always think they are. <laughs> How amazing that's you such lovely fresh ingredients out of our garden. And as you said earlier, such lovely range of colours. You know, they, they all say the more variety of colour you have in your diet, the better your diet is. So, brilliant. Okay, what I will just do actually is just weigh this so you have a bit of an idea how much you need. Um, bear with me one moment, get the scales out. If I can get the things apart, that would be good. <laughs> just zero that. So in grams, I have harvested about 400 grams. Really? Just from Three, those? 394 grams. So 400 grams. So hopefully that will help you if you were going to make it from frozen. Okay. And so more food for the beast, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> more food for the beast. <laughs> And of course, the beast needs lots. Oh, he does, or she does. He does. So, what other ingredients do we have, Mrs. W? Okay, so as I said, approximately 400 grams of corn kernels. We have, so that all of these vegetables have been chopped to a similar size to the corn kernel, is what I've tried to do. One cucumber, one large shallot. One of ours is a brune it shallot. A brune so, shallot. <laughs> so I would probably say in, in a shop-bought large shallot, you probably need two to three. Yeah. But there's, you can use an onion as well. It doesn't have to be shallot. Um, one green bell pepper. Two plum tomatoes. Our, they are our San Marzano. It could be Roma, though, if you're they listening, could, Ken. They could be Roma. They could, in fact, they could be any tomato. They are that they're de-seeded. The same with the, the the peppers, and I also de-seeded the cucumber too. I've forgotten to say that. Good job you said that. Um, there's the equivalent of two stalks of celery in there, very finely chopped, because Mr. W isn't overly fond of large chunks. <laughs> Of celery, so we try and make that fine to disguise it. <laughs> Quite right, too. <laughs> Two red chili peppers, uh, they are our jalapenos, and but you could use whichever ones you like for strength. And um, this is just some chopped parsley. There's also 175 grams of granulated sugar, 300 millilitres of cider vinegar. I'm going to put a couple of teaspoons of salt 
add a couple of teaspoons of um, mustard powder. Trevor D will be much interested in the uh, cider vinegar because there's aspels. Oh, okay. He's down there in Suffolk, isn't oh, he? Oh, yes. Yes. Good old aspels. I do like an aspel cider myself, have to say. Very nice. So all we do, and this is, this is a really easy recipe to, to follow, it's a bit time-consuming chopping the vegetables, but once they're all chopped, all you do is put everything into your either large saucepan, or this is my preserving pan, which Mr W bought me a few years back now and has been used so many times for so many different things, but I love it and it's fantastic. So in go all of the corn kernels. The cucumber, one cucumber, put that all in. This is one large Zebrun shallot. <laughs> <laughs> but as I said, it could be an onion, it could be a couple of three short shop bought shallots. One green bell pepper. Two Samazano Plum tomatoes, but any tomato really with the seeds taken out would be good. Must try that Roma next year. Yes, I, we, I definitely, that's definitely on our grow list for next year, I think, yeah. isn't it? Um, there's two finely chopped uh, celery stalks and two finely chopped jalapeno chilies. As I say, whatever heat of chili you like, you add the heat that you like, that's fine. To this we then add 175 grams of granulated sugar. This is, there is a, the bottle contained 350 mils, I've taken 50 mils out, so I'm now going to add the whole of the 300 mils of cider vinegar. It smells absolutely amazing <laughs> already does, before we yeah. even cooked it. To that um, I'm adding two teaspoons of salt. That can be any salt. I've just got some rock salt here today. You said that it was actually quite low in the supermarket for salt the other day, didn't you? It was, wasn't it, when yeah. I went there? And three teaspoons of dried mustard. The only thing, the only ingredient that I'm not putting in at the moment is the parsley. That goes in right at the end. So what we do now is we simply put it on the heat and gently bring it to a boil, stirring all the time. Okay, so we are just gradually now mixing all of these ingredients together. Beautiful colours, fantastic smell I have to say. <laughs> it's looking really good. And what we're doing now is just steadily stirring as the heat gets into the liquid and the vegetables, just to dissolve the sugar more than anything. You don't want the sugar catching on the bottom of the pan. So just keep it gently moving while the sugar dissolves. Oh, I've had some nice warm days during September. In fact, the last three to four weeks have been quite warm. I've had a bit of rain about, there's no doubt about that, and some of the storms that have blown through. But it has nevertheless been quite warm and it's helped to ripen the things that we have here in the greenhouse. Those San Marzano tomatoes are looking beautiful now, aren't they? They are. And I know I need to take a few of those because you're going to be making some of those, I aren't you? I do need a couple. For They really are a lovely tomato, these San Marzanos. But I haven't forgotten, Ken, a, a comment you sent to me about the rumour. And because we now have the polytunnel and we've got a bit more room to grow a few more tomato plants, we're actually going to run those alongside our San Marzano, aren't we? Yeah. Yep. We always like to try something new every year. Um, and so, you know, when you leave your comments and you say, I should try this and I should try that, you know, I really do value those because I don't know everything that's out there seed-wise. And if you tell me that they're 
you know, they've done really well for you, then we're always willing to give them a try because we do like to have something new to keep a bit of interest in the garden. Now the peppers this year have done really well, haven't they? They have. Yes. And had a lovely harvest. I do think that overwintering these peppers has done really well for us. Um, it's probably the best harvest we've ever had of these, isn't it? Yes. Really it is. is. Yeah. And a good size too, not small ones. So I would urge you, to, if you don't do it, to try and over, overwinter some of your plants. And if you're not sure about how to go about that, then I'll leave a link down below in the description of that video from last back end of October, wasn't it? Yes, I think it was. We were coming up to Halloween, weren't we? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And do go and watch that and you'll see a step-by-step -step process of exactly how we did that. We shall give you another reminder as we approach the end of October because we'll be doing our own. That's not to say that we don't still grow peppers from seed. We do. Just not so many. And really the main reason for that is that, well again, we like to try different varieties. And actually if we just look down here, Mrs W, these yellow ones are looking really quite good. They're not yes. going to be long before they're ready, are they? They, um, they were the purple ones to start off with. And we had some purple ones last year that went red. And I assumed they were going to be the same, but these ones are not. These are going yellow, which I said I'd like some yellow peppers for next year, but we've got them this year instead. We're a year ahead. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. They really are. So we're still um, getting regular harvests of aubergines. They've done really well this year again. I do like a good aubergine. And you can see that they're still producing flowers. They are, aren't they? Yeah, and if you remember, they did that last year too, because our autumns here now are much milder. Uh, on average, we don't see a frost until mid-November, and actually over the last couple of three years, we haven't seen any frosts until into January, mm. have we? No, we haven't. December is now starting to get a very mild month. Now, these won't get going until December because the nights will get cooler, and of course, we get the diminishing light levels. But I think we'll probably still get a few more before we get to the end of October. So that's another nice harvest from there. The chilies, just like the peppers, have been really successful for us. I can't ever remember getting a harvest as large as we've had. We've actually been picking chilies now for, well, at least the last month, haven't we? Probably oh, since, the, since, since the end of July, yes, I would not, say. If not before, I think we had an odd one or two before that. Yeah. Well, all the peppers are now starting to colour up. We've had some peppers along the way over the last few weeks, but they really all are starting to come together now. And you can see we've got plenty of them. Now, we'd better go back down to the kitchen to see how Mrs W's getting on. So here we are, we've now brought it to a nice boil and so we're going to turn it down to a gentle simmer and let it simmer away, stirring occasionally for about 20 minutes until the vegetables are tender, is really what the aim that we're looking for. So just let it simmer away. Now, a lot of the recipes call for some chopped coriander. I'm not overly fond of chopped coriander, so I'm replacing that with some, a bit of chopped parsley. We've got a lot of it anyway. So right in the last couple of minutes of simmering, and you can see it's come to a lovely consistency. That's really good. Cool. Yeah, it does. Just going to tip a couple of tablespoons of chopped parsley in and give it a stir around. 
Look at those vibrant colours. Beautiful. And all from our lovely no yes. dig garden. Yes, exactly. So these are now fully sterilised now then? They are fully sterilised, they are really really hot, they will be really really hot so um, I'm just going to decant the relish into them now and every, be, everything being hot is you just need to be careful not to burn yourself, hurt yourself or anything. So I'm just going to stand stand these up slightly better. I always put the, the um, jars onto a baking tray and then just fill them as I go along. Not sure how many it was going to fill but we'll, we shall see. I do have, um, this is a jam chutney strainer, I'm not quite sure what you call it. There's another thing that Mr W bought me <laughs> that I really like and I really use a lot. So just pop that over the top and it does help to stop spillage down the side of the jars and things and then into those hot jars and the jars need to be hot just pack in the chutney or the, not chutney the relish it's a relish A little bit left. Oh, will it go in somewhere? I never like to, to waste anything when we've cooked it, so it's going to go in even though it's not going to be a full jar, but it will be something that me and Mr. W use up pretty quickly. You do, however, have to wait a couple of weeks before you eat it uh, you could eat it now it wouldn't hurt at all but the flavor for the flavors to develop a good couple of weeks would be good and then all i do now is just get the lids and put them on if you put them all on when the mixture is hot just move this out of the way. And be very careful, and I was using the oven gloves to do this, tighten the lids. And then as the mixture cools down, it will form a vacuum inside the jar. And then once the vacuum is formed, these will keep in a jar for up to a year. Um, once you open them, you need to be storing it in the fridge for probably up to six to eight weeks before you need to discard it after that, but there we go. And there you have it, some sweet corn relish. All I need to do, once it's cooled, because obviously these are very warm at the moment, is to label them, and then they can be put into storage until we need them. And as I said, you need to give them a couple, two to three weeks before you open them to get the best results from them of flavour. So, yeah. So I hope you've really enjoyed this recipe. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you're notified every time we upload another video. Whether it be in the kitchen or in the garden. It could be either. You never know. <laughs> Until the next time, you all take care. Bye.